on the left side. Amen. Amen. Um, so let's go before the Lord, our great God, in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you, oh God, for you just being so kind to us. We pray in the name of Jesus that you'd meet us tonight, uh, that you'd open up our understanding. We pray, oh God, that you would even now, oh God, speak to our hearts, minister to us, oh God, as we endeavor to walk closer with you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. We praise you for all things. Settle our spirits, oh God, as we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord again, everybody. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. We again, we bring you greetings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from here in uh, the city of Los Angeles, California. That's the Temple Church, the city of Los amen. Angeles, uh, where God is blessing even right now. Amen. Uh, I hope and pray I got enough battery to get us through <laughs> for the time being. But um, nevertheless, uh, we've been exploring uh, the book of Romans, chapter number eight. Amen. In a series entitled I Am Persuaded. Amen. Um, and for those that missed our opening scriptures, I certainly hope and pray uh, that you got those. Again, that was John 8, <laughs> uh, verses uh, 30 through 32, as well as 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. I uh, pray that you read those at your own time. We're in the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Go with me, Romans 8. Let me know if y'all can hear me real well. Um, we can turn the volume up here in the sanctuary so that you all can hear me um, as loud as possible. But give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up, give me something, y'all. I'm I'm out here just trying to make sure we're good, y'all. Being quiet right now, not helping me. So please, uh, if you're out there and you can hear me effectively, let me know something. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Story. All right. We're in the book of Romans, chapter number eight. Amen. Uh, again, we, as we endeavor to continue our study in the book of Romans uh, concerning uh, the subject, I am persuaded. I think it's always imperative that before we get into uh, the good part of Romans, which is 35 through 39, we take some time to lay, uh, to take back some of the pillars um, of this great book. I certainly pray and hope that in your own personal devotion uh, that you give attention um, to uh, some of the wonderful things associated with Romans chapter number eight. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. All right. Last week, we discovered and unlocked uh, the first part of Romans chapter number one that dealt with what it means for us to be in Christ Jesus, how imperative is it important for us to fully understand um, this particular passage uh, and who Paul, the Apostle Paul, is speaking to when he's talking to the church in Rome, but also to the body of Christ at large, what that testimony is of those individuals who are in Christ Jesus. And so last week we dealt and un uh, unlocked uh, in essence, uh, the spirit associated with being in Christ Jesus, what it means to walk in him, what it means uh, uh, to hold to our uh, doctrine, to be able to be found in him. Uh, we did some great study there. This week, before we dive into the uh, next part, I want to discuss here in Romans 8, uh, 35 to 39. I think it's imperative that we take a look at what uh, the Apostle Paul would expostulate on as it relates to uh, kingdom living, or, or most importantly, what it means uh, to be spiritual thinkers or to be uh, that of a uh, Christ-centered mindset. Um, it's imperative to understand that once we have new distinction of being found in Christ and walking in Christ Jesus, um, that the Apostle Paul will go on to tell us in verse number two of this particular text, for the spirit of the law of uh, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death uh, for that the law for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin uh, uh, condemned sin in the flesh um, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and so it's imperative we understand that there are some fruits and some attributes associated that clearly distinguish those individuals who are in christ jesus um, and that distinction is really known through the mentality through the mindset what it means for us to be spiritually a man uh, 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 spiritually minded versus those who are carnal minded and notice that there is a great differentiation or uh, a great uh, uh, um, uh, distinction between the two classifications. If there's ever a season in particular uh, time that we have to be attentive to this admonishment of the Apostle Paul, it certainly is this particular time. 
Because in order for us to weather the adversities and the time in which we're living, it requires us to have a spiritual mind. It is impossible for us in this particular season with everything that's going on, even right outside of our doorsteps, uh, the things that are going on uh, in other parts of the country, uh, what's going on in our politics, things going on financially, as well as a pandemic on top of all this. Uh, in order for us to weather these particular seasons, it takes a spiritual mentality. It takes a spiritual mindset. You must be spiritually minded in these particular seasons. In order for us to fully understand and appreciate the essence of Romans 35 through 39, it's important that you understand that it takes a spiritual mindset to be able to have the faith uh, to believe that God is able to sustain his people despite all that's going on literally. That takes a spiritual mind mindset. And the carnal-minded people uh, are the ones who are exposing themselves in this season. Those who are carnal-minded, uh, they're up and down. You see them. <laughs> One moment they have faith, the next moment they don't have faith. Uh, they literally are on all manners of the scale. And it's impossible to keep up with them because they have a carnal mentality. Uh, but those of us who have a spiritual mindset know that despite all that's going on, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Again, our admonishment uh, before we begin looking at the next part of Romans 35 is this. Understanding, verse number five, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, what, is enmity, what, enmity against God, for it is not subject uh, to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It's imperative that we understand as believers that part of our thinking is the expectation associated with our pleasing of God. Our living only goes as far as our thinking. <laughs> um... I wish you could put that in the comment section. Uh, my living cannot go past my thinking. I wish I had some creative way to say that. Um, but literally, our lives are a byproduct of what we think. The scripture tells us what as a man thinketh, so is he. And so our lives literally are articulated by our thought and by the mindset that we have as believers. And so in order for us to be spiritually minded and those who are going to be ambassadors that please God, it takes a, a spiritual mindset in order for us to please God. Those who are not in Christ, who walk after the flesh, they have a mindset that cannot please God, right? We cannot live past our thinking, right? If your thinking is small, you will always place yourself in a box Psychologically, you always place your box, place yourself in a box spiritually, faith-wise. Uh, <laughs> there are so many things that God desires to do in the lives of his people. He cannot unlock because your thinking is too small. It's got nothing to do with how big God is. He's infinite in wisdom. He's all-seeing, all-knowing. Again, he sits on, you know, the axis of the earth. He has all power, all strength, all knowledge, all ability. But he's limited by your thinking. The only thing that hinders God's ability to work on your behalf is how you view God, how you see God. And those who don't have a spiritual mindset to see God in the midst of tribulation and persecution, things present, things to come, those are individuals who are currently minded. They're not able to fully grasp the weight of God's plan uh, for his people for such a time as this, right? So an important for us to, it's important for us to understand that in pleasing God, it takes a renewed mind and it takes a spiritual mind in order for us to please God. We cannot live past our thinking. <laughs> we cannot live past our thinking. And again, God is saying in this particular season, there are things that I'm just going to take a sidebar. There are things I've been wanting to do. There are doors I have been wanting to open. There are things that are just this past week, just, just today, God was showing me just how much is available to me and what God could have done for me years ago if I would have had the faith to step out and do it. If I would have had the faith to ask the question, if I would have had the faith to ask it, I got an answer today that I should have gotten three, four years ago, today. But because my mentality was small, because I didn't think I could do it on my own, for whatever reason, I was inhibited in my mentality. Today was released something that should have been released three or four years ago. You cannot live past your thinking. 
I think about all the times I had to rob Peter to pay Paul to make things stretch and, and how many things I had to sacrifice. And the answer was just in one phone call. It was in one email. It had opened up to me so many different possibilities. And not only did it open up to me, it what opened up to me was a door of favor that was coming through multiple veins that I had shut off because my mentality was too small. And I'm the one getting up preaching to y'all every week, have faith, have we? I'm the one who even tithes, believing God for the door, but won't send the email. I'm having church all by myself in here and be my own Aaron tonight, <laughs> play my own organ. And man, but I, I'm telling you, there are some things that you will never be able to outlive until you're able to step your level of thinking up. Um, and, and, and your thinking is tied to your ability uh, to have a man pleasure in God and for God to be pleased in us. Uh, again, I'm not just speaking about financial doors because he did those things financially. I'm not just thinking about setting up generational wealth because he did those things. I'm talking about the things that we interact with over and over again that trip us up over and over again because we just don't put on the mind of Christ to go and operate in these particular seasons. And so I, I know I, I thank y'all for helping me tonight because <laughs> the enemy, he was trying to choke up this, this Wi-Fi to get this word from coming through. Amen. But I'm telling y'all, you are one decision away amen from God releasing the supernatural in your life if you would just dare to have the faith to please him in not being small in your thinking not being intrepid not being fearful not being uh, uh, um, uh, 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 claustrophobic uh, not being uh, uh, fearful of decisions that other people have made well I've seen somebody else do it and when somebody else did it it didn't work for them because I'm telling y'all that's what happened with me and I was intrepid in my own decision making because I saw somebody else go down the same path. And because they didn't have the same outcome, I thought their outcome would have been my outcome. And so I put a muzzle on the favor of God because I couldn't shift my thinking. My God, tonight, I feel like having church all by myself. Praise God. Right. So it's imperative we understand that in order for us to be a man spiritual, a man, we must put away the carnal mindset. We've got to think bigger. We've got to dream bigger. We've got to ask God for bigger, which means, too, that in the midst of adversity, we must take on a spiritual mentality when we're facing the things that we're up against. What are you saying, Pastor Shorter? I'm telling you, situations come, adversities come, infirmities comes, challenges come, affliction comes, amen, distresses comes, tribulation comes, just as we come last uh, last week, amen, we talked about the last few weeks as it, deals with, as it deals with tribulation, but all those things are only a hindrance to the individual who has a carnal mindset that has a, amen, a thought um, that somehow God is not able to prevail. And putting on that spiritual mindset that the Apostle Paul is encouraging us to do, I believe helps us weather the adversities that we are going to see. Because again, as we talked about last week, through, amen, the kingdom comes great tribulation. My God. <laughs> but it's the mentality that helps us persevere. It's the mentality that helps us get through it. And I'm telling you today, as my own, I'm using myself as my own guinea pig. Don't you one more day sow into something that you don't have the faith to believe. And I'm a living witness. I'm, I'm before this church now telling this church now to stand in this pulpit that if you all would have been here, amen, I would have been encouraging you all, amen, <laughs> to believe God, to believe God, to believe God. And God was saying, I had to do it in your life to shift your mentality because concerning this particular area, you weren't thinking big enough. And now I'm catching up now on something that I could have been over a couple, a few years ago. If I just would have had the mentality, amen, to believe God and take God at his word. All right. So there's a difference between carnal thinking and spiritual thinking. And I know we're probably different as it relates to the waywardness associated with thinking. But again, there is a very thin line between trusting God and believing God, amen, and not. There is a thin line between carnal thinking and spiritual thinking because you can have the appearance, amen, that I'm believing God, I'm trusting God, and you're sowing emptily. Uh, 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 um, that's even a word, emptily, or <laughs> sowing in emptiness, right? <laughs> because you don't have, amen, the faith to push 
into the next place that God wants you to spiritually and mentally. So I pray that that word, amen, uh, is something, amen, that will, will shift your gears in tonight's Bible class. I'm going there tonight, so I just hope that y'all play uh, pray with me, amen. Uh, the book of James, chapter number three, verses 13, amen, through 18, gives us more context as it relates to what it means to be carnally minded, all right? Uh, the scriptures in your hearing tell you this, who is a wise man and endure with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. To be spiritually minded means that we must, again, put away conversations that are not beneficial. Conversations that do not, amen, yield the meekness of wisdom, right? Uh, to, be, to be spiritually minded means to operate with a degree of maturity, right? Uh, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. <laughs> Uh, yes, there's some, there's a carnal mentality because many of us quote unquote want to keep it real. Now there's a difference between being real and being raggedy, being real and being raunchy, being real and being risque. No, this particular text I'm teaching tonight, y'all, cause I just want to go there deals with a man, us learning a man to get the strife out of our heart, not to be disingenuine, to be honest about the moment and not lying. We always talk about speaking truth to power. If you ever wanted, amen, a, a, a scripture to go with that sentiment of speaking truth to power, as they always like to say, you have it right here. Glory not and lie not against the truth, right? This deals with people who are trying to lie against, amen, the spirit of God, but, but also too being disingenuous about, amen, their feelings. And so they hold bitterness and they hold envy and they hold all these things in their heart and they repress their truth feelings that will not allow them to have the fruit of freedom. And so that mentality is a carnal mentality. The wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. What are you saying? <laughs> right? Um, those that are carnal mind, amen, um, their wisdom does not come from God. And that's difficult. Uh, I'm, I'm going to eventually get into Romans 8, but I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling some help in here tonight. Um, because there's some people who, amen, assume that they get all manner of wisdom and God told me and all revelation and kind of stuff like that, but they do so with bitterness and they do so, amen, with strife. And so it contradicts where it comes from because these are the earthly, sensual, and devilish admonishments that people pose as wisdom when in all actuality they're masking and perpetrating what the real feelings are. But in your, so they'll feel a certain way and try to attach God to it to try to put a different spin on it, but that's carnality. It's imperative that you understand what a carnal mind is, right? But the wisdom that is from above is what first pure. How do you know what comes from God? How do we know individuals who are spiritual thinking? The mentality is pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle. It's easy to be entreated. It's full of mercy and good fruits. You cannot be spiritually minded and there be no fruit associated with that. It took me a while to get on here tonight, but God sent me here to encourage somebody tonight, amen, that your spiritual, amen, thinking should yield good fruits and they should be full of mercy, right? Without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the word. That's the King James, y'all. Go study this. I'm, I, I cannot wait for us to do an entire study on the book of James because the book of James, I believe, is some nuts and bolts and just some practical basics for Christian living 101. I'm telling you, it's just like we get a lot from the book of Proverbs. I would equate the book of James to Proverbs as it relates to just good instruction for those individuals who are trying to figure it out spiritually. If you fully want to understand what what it means, amen, to be spiritually minded. Think about this. <laughs> he lays out individuals who be lying, you know, faking the funk, you know, <laughs> that's the carnal mentality, right? But those who are in wisdom, those aren't always the people who snapping back, popping off. No, no, no. These are individuals who think first with a pure heart. They're peaceable. They're gentle. They're not easily entreated. Spiritually minded means that if I say something to you, you're not always in defense. You're not always ready to book. You know, you're not always ready to, you know, grab Vaseline and, you know, put on your Tims or, or you know, put on some shoes, you know, to, to go scrapping. No. If you are an individual who is a peaceable, amen, and is gentle and is a spiritual-minded person, you are always full of mercy. What does that mean? You are always willing to give people even what you know they deserve. Hmm. My God, what are you saying, Pastor Shorter? <laughs> the spiritually minded person shows restraint. The spiritual minded person has the ability, amen, even in situations where they have the upper hand to be gracious toward other people. 
That's the spiritual mentality. Not, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to put you in your place. That's not spirit. You can't pass it off as being honest and being real. No, spiritual minded people, they strive for peace. They're full of mercy, considering their own actions, considering their own, amen, <laughs> plight. And most importantly, considering the fruit of which they're getting ready to speak. Most of us like to put stuff out there that we know can grow. So you put out negativity, it can grow. You put out nonsense, it can grow. Some people cuss, there's no fruit in that. But the measured spiritual mindset of an individual that has a spiritual thinking magnitude that is of God is a person who's full of mercy, without partiality, right? They're not on one side, no, they, 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 you know, they call them balls and strikes right down the middle, amen, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That is a powerful statement. The fruit of righteousness, the seed of righteousness is sown, right? It's to, what does it mean to sow, right? It means to pour it into, right? Uh, uh, the fruit of righteousness, right? Which means that means the seed of righteousness for which fruit, uh, fruit blossoms. Righteousness is sown out of that person, which means the fruit that is spoken out of them is fruit of righteousness because that's what's being sown into you, right? Uh, in peace of them that make peace. So for those that make peace, the seed that you're going to get planted in you is righteousness and the fruit thereof is righteousness as well. I know it's, I know it's hard to process for some of us, but it's so imperative because again, there is a difference between this earthly, sensual, devilish mentality, this I've always got to be right, I've always got to be my way, as well as the spiritual mindset of a person that's full of grace, a person that's full of good fruit, a person that desires to be meek, right? Again, go study James 3 so that you understand the mentality of living in a spiritual uh, uh, a day in which we're called, amen, to be I individuals who bear the fruit of righteousness even in this season. Uh, my next text goes to Galatians uh, 5. Galatians 5. We eventually get to Romans, amen, but somehow we're here tonight, all right? <laughs> Galatians 5, amen, verse number 16 tells us, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? Uh, lust, <laughs> uh, lust, the natural things of the flesh that burn, right? The things that are contrary, the things uh, uh, that uh, are within us, the vices that are within us that try to get us to pursue things that are not of God. If we're walking in the spirit, we will not fulfill, amen, the lust of the flesh. What does that mean? That means that walking in the spirit, there will be some times when wayward thoughts come. But if you're walking in the spirit, nuts and bolts, you know, Christianity 101, if you're walking in the spirit, the scripture says you shall not fulfill. That means make good on a promissory note. That means carry out the activity. That's the difference. Everybody that's saved, if you'll be honest and you'll just raise your hand as an emoji, will tell you that they've had a bad thought in being saved. Thought about cussing thought about retaliation, thought about, you know, pursuing something they had no business doing. The difference between this <laughs> is that there was no fulfillment in that lust or in that thought. Why? Because when you're walking in the spirit, thank you, my one person that's going to be real with me. Amen. <laughs> when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? Again, being spiritual, right? Dealing with a man this particular season and this climate in which we're, we're living in, all kind of crazy stuff comes to us, right? All kind of things we are bombarded with. There are all kind of things that are placed on our plate. There are a lot of things that entice us and frustrate us. But when you're walking in the spirit, that gets consumed and overshadowed by the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it will not lead us to carry those things out. And if should we do fall and do make mistake, God is righteous because he knows our heart to forgive us, to clean us up, and to wash us and make us over again. It's old school teaching. I know sometimes for some people it's not deep enough, you know, but hey, in the time in which we live, sometimes I just need a plane. I don't, I don't need to be philosophied to. I don't need an intricate season. You know, you know what? I'm telling you, if you keep praying, showing up to prayer on the prayer line, if you keep a consecrated life, if you keep submitting yourself, right, shutting off the flesh, shutting those things off, if you attempt to walk in the spirit, that thing will never get into you for you to write the receipt, amen, that pays for the wages of death. I'm telling you. <laughs> 
right? The gift of God will work on the inside of you as you walk in the spirit. For the flesh loveth the fast of the spirit and the spirit after the flesh, and they are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. You must understand that as long as you are in this flesh, you are in a perpetual battle. You will constantly be fighting your thoughts, vain imaginations, things trying to pull you out, things trying to pull you what? To separate you from the love of God and Christ Jesus. But those of you that walk in the spirit, right? Live in the spirit, ye that are in Christ. Going back to what we talked about last week, you are not, uh, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's a declaration. Amen. One of the byproducts of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is anybody that's walking with God, walking under the power of God, walking under the anointing of God, walking under the demonstration of God, you may be enticed. It may try to dangle over you like something, you know, but you will not be able to fulfill it if you walk in the spirit. Praise God. Get interrupted. I twenty percent. So let me see how much we can we can get uh, on this. All right. All right. Praise God. All right. So uh, our next package. Uh, so again, carnal thinking creates a internal war. Right. That's what verse seventeen says. The, the, the flesh is always going to lust after the spirit, right? It, it, they're contrary to one another. There's going to always be this constant and consistent war because there's always going to be a thought of who controls the mind. And whoever controls the mind, what controls the living? That's what we talked about earlier. You can only live, you cannot live beyond what you think. Right. And so if your thinking is thinking, right, if your thinking is off, if your thinking is contrary to the will of God, it is difficult for God to be emboldened in things that are contrary to his will. But if you commit yourself to walking, right, walking in the spirit, walking, amen, in the power of God, demonstration of God, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right. As Christians, we are expected by God not to focus on our fleshly desires. So go with me real quickly back to Romans, but Romans 13, Romans 13. I hope this is blessing somebody tonight. Uh, Romans 13 and verse number 14. But put ye on what? The Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of the flesh. My God. Uh, the admonishment from the Apostle Paul was for us to walk honestly as in the day. Right? Uh, there's something honest about the light. People don't do dirt in the light. They try not to do dirt in the light. Um, I know some people are just bold. That's how you know a bold spirit. But most people, when the lights are on and during the day, they try not to steal, right, while it's daylight out, right? It's when it's when it gets murky, when it gets dark. That's when the evil deeds come. That's when people, you know, start switching up, start flipping out, right? Uh, no, <laughs> the admonishment from the Apostle Paul, if you just go up to the verse before, tells let us walk honestly as in the day. Let's walk, you know, you know, as as in the day we walk, you know, for the most part, uh, because there's visibility, because the cops are out, because there's more people moving. So we walk honestly in the day, right? Not rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering or in wantonness, um, not in strife or envy. But he says our requirement to be spiritually minded is for us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. What does that provision mean? That provision very much means just like a plate or just like uh, 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 putting some money aside. Uh, I make provision for my wife and I to go on vacation. That means I set some things aside for us so that we can have some time to go out and enjoy each other, right? Uh, what the Apostle Paul is saying here to the church in Rome is when you put on Christ, amen, don't put anything aside for the flesh. That means close the back door. That means stop making a plate. I think I preached about this some time ago about how you can shut off, you know, the enemy uh, by putting a, putting a lid um, on, on, on those things that are contrary uh, to the will of God, right? So don't make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of the flesh thereof, which means don't leave a trace. If we if we talk in the 21st century, don't give them your phone number, ladies, right? So that there's no conversation that 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 yields you to be in an entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fellas, same thing, you know, if you know you're in a relationship, I mean, cut it off, you know what I mean? Know what that is, stop feeding that, 
You don't stop, stop making provision for things that do not lead to, to, to things of great manifestation. Stop, amen, entertaining things and stop putting things out there, amen, to and have an opportunity uh, for enticement that you may one day fulfill the lust thereof. Right. You have to control your thinking. You have to control the seeds. I know it's basic for some. Uh, I hope this saves somebody from making some from crazy decisions and, and create, uh, uh, creating uh, creating havoc and creating a mess that you cannot un, un, undo uh, by putting yourself on a soul tie and by making a connection that you fed because you put it out there. Right. You show you put on the right thing. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, you just randomly show up to the gym at the at the same time this person was showing up, right? Right? That's how these things happen. These things happen because you sow seeds into the negativity. You sow seeds into the carnality until one day you have to make good on that. And then now you have to write a check, you know, <laughs> you know, and now you have to satisfy the, you know, what's been, been laid out. So the Apostle Paul says, let's walk honestly, just like we walk or with the lights on. Everybody, you know, is 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 for the most part acting, acting sane. Let's walk soberly. Let's not walk riotously. Let's not walk in drunkenness. Uh, let's be amen what God desires to do. That's what it means for us to have a spiritual mindset. Right. Uh, let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter number ten and verse number five. Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse number five. You know, I'm learning to get delivered from public opinion because I pastor Bethesda Temple Church. I don't pastor the world. I don't pastor the nations. Um, I pastor Bethesda Temple Church, and I thank God for the favor that he's blessed me with to be able to have a ministry that regions in other areas. But this is the word for this house. And so I don't, I'm not doing this for views or for likes. This is instruction for us because um, whether 20 of us, however many of us are here on this, we got to be saved because God is looking for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. So I hope that this is something that you will say, you know what, even if it's not for me, <laughs> this is something I'm going to put on the shelf because there may be a day of testing. There may be a day of adversity. There may be something uh, that comes my way. Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to remember it's daylight. <laughs> I gotta watch my, I gotta watch my tongue. I gotta walk worthy of the vocation. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter number ten and verse number five says, "Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ." It's a mentality. It is a mentality. It all starts in the mind, saints. That's what separates those, amen, who are carnal thinkers from those who are spirit-filled thinkers, right? It all starts in the mind, casting down those evaginations, casting down those high things that would try to usurp authority over the knowledge of God and bring those things into captivity, every thought into the obedience of Christ. My God. Right. The spiritually minded individual brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ will. So it means literally there are times when even you have to rationalize your thought and your in, in your thinking. Is this a Christ thought? <laughs> I know that sounds cheesy, but every now and then when you're watching what you're watching. And when you're saying what you're saying or when you're consuming what you're consume, uh, consuming, sometimes you have to ask yourself, you know what? If, 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 if this is just a great example, flow with me. If I say that Christ is on the inside of me, that means everything that I see, he literally sees too, because he's inside of me. Which means everything that I say, he says, because he's on the inside of me. Everything, I'm sorry, everything I entertain, uh, uh, um, he has to entertain as well if he's on the inside of me. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense for somebody, which means why am I watching what I'm watching if I say Christ is inside of me? You mean to tell me that Christ is up watching some nonsense? You mean <laughs> he listening to some, he's on Instagram? <laughs> Every now and then you literally have to have conversations in your mind. And I know, again, <laughs> not trying to be deep. You sometimes have to have conversations in your mind and say, you know, wow, am, am I that far? 
if, if he's in my space and he's all over me and he's keeping me alive and he's the Holy Ghost, amen, on the inside of me in my heart, is he pleased with that which I am consuming? And so every evil imagination has to be cast down. Everything that would try to usurp his plan, if he's controlling me, right, that means and he's supposed to be leading and guiding me in the all truth and understanding, and I'm out here on some waywardness, you know what I mean? That means I have to check myself and say, you know what, is my thought in alignment with my living and expectation that he has for me? And he's in the same, he's in the same space. So I'm going to entertain lust and Christ going to be on the inside at the same time. How can, what fellowship does light have with darkness if he He's on the inside of me. So in my heart, I got all this hatred. I got all this nonsense on the inside of me, lack of compassion, lustful after everything. I don't put my flesh under subjection, but I say Christ is living in the same space. That makes no sense, church. It makes no sense, right? <laughs> so, so it's imperative that you literally sometimes have to have conversations with yourself and ask yourself, you know what, as I'm getting ready to send this email, because I'm getting ready to tell Becky what I really feel about her, I got to really sometimes take that evil imagination and cast it down. Even that evil community, even that evil thought that said, you know, I don't know what they're doing in this church and they ain't using me and, and I don't know what's wrong with my leader. Even that stuff, I got to cast it down. Everything that I'm espousing to be in Christ gets checked because Christ is on the inside of me. And if you always keep that accountability on the inside of you, you will always have a spiritual mindset and not be consumed by the, by the carnal mind and the carnality of the mind. It seems so basic, but if you would sometimes take a moment to realize who you are and what's in you when you make your decision, you would not do half the stuff that you do. You wouldn't. Because that accountability is there. So every single time, you know, <laughs> I have to pinch myself and ask myself, you know what? <laughs> when I get up and sing, is my living in vain? Well, he would know the answer because he's on the inside of me, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> am I, Lord, am I doing your will? Well, he would know because he's in it with me. So once again, casting down every imagination, every high thing that would exalt him itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that would be contrary to God, amen, because God's on the inside of me and everything I'm viewing, he's viewing. Everything I'm saying, he's saying because if he's in me, he can't be in me and be uncomfortable. How does that work? So I've got to bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. I didn't mean to go here tonight, but... <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to the book of Titus real quick. Titus, amen. I'm eventually going to get to Romans, amen. I'm, I apologize. Uh, Titus 1 and 15. Titus 1 and 15. This is blessing you. Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs. Give me some 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 likes or something. Whatever we do on social media, let me know that you are enjoying the word thus far. Titus 1 and 15 tells us, unto the pure all things are pure. And unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. That's a heart thing, right? <laughs> uh, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. You will always live in that fear of uh, an ability to uh, um, live up to the expectation of the Holy Ghost if you don't have a pure mind. You will always be second guessing because <laughs> to the pure, amen, we have a pure expectation and you have a pure uh, uh, um, goal and objective and motive, right? But if you're unpure, right, un undefiled, and most importantly, the scripture says unbelieving, unbelieving, but even the mind and conscience is defiled. So when you're unbelieving, right, unbelieving, of the precepts, unbelieving of God's word, unbelieving of God's expectation, it yields you to being a person that is, that is, that is wayward in the thinking. That is the mindset is always off, never able to fully come into harmony with God's expectation and God's plan, right? And so, to the pure, all things are pure. To those who submit themselves to God's plan, God's will, they're not out looking for bad. I mean, it's literally pure, right? But unto them that are defiled, unbelieving. Uh, is nothing pure. Let me give you what the ESV says so that you have the, uh, the uh, um, actually, no, let me, let me just espouse it a little bit. Let me go with the message Bible so then you kind of, <laughs> kind of get a little bit more 
context and color, because sometimes the Message Bible kind of gives you some of this, right? Everything is clean to the clean minded, right? Nothing is clean to the dirty minded unbelievers. Think about that. It takes a dirty mind. The, the, the connotation associated with those individuals who have carnal minds are those who have dirty thinking or dirty minded people, right? And nobody wants that feeling, right? A dirty mind, I already get, you know, uh, uh, bad feelings about that, right? It says they leave their dirty fingerprints on every thought and act. They say they know God, but their actions speak louder than their words. Uh, they're real creeps, disobedient, good for nothings. <laughs> That's what the Message Bible says. Every now and then I love to go to the Message Bible, go to ESV to kind of get some plain language. Um, but to, for you to get a, a better depiction of what the scripture says. Sometimes the pure, pure all things are pure, but no, literally. Those individuals a, uh, who um, um, are, are uh, uh, dirty-minded, Amen. Uh, 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 they leave their fingerprints on every act, but more importantly, they're individuals who <laughs> the scriptures say, amen, are disobedient and good for nothing. So it's imperative we understand, amen, uh, what God's expectation is for us, and that is for us to have pure thinking and to be a spiritually minded person, to be clean in our thinking, because as our thinking is pure, so does our actions reflect what it is that's in our mindset. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 11. 1 Peter 2 and 11. Go back to, back to the King James. All right. First two, uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse number 11 tells us, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul, having your conversations honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, uh, they may uh, by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Again, this is an admonishment, amen, to those who were once in the faith, according to, amen, the apostle Peter, amen, who are literally everywhere across the world. He's pretty much saying, clean up your living, because in cleaning up your living, you have people who are not saved that will come and make a decision uh, concerning salvation based upon the way you glorify God or not glorify God. So it is imperative that you're careful of your speech um, and the things that you say, even against those who are evil doers, because it's through the demonstration of your spiritual thinking and spiritual mindset and your good works uh, that when you glorify God, it yields the fruit, amen, that leads to harvest for individuals to come into the knowledge of Christ Jesus, all right? So the spiritual mind understands the danger, amen, of fleshly desires, all right, um, and that it's imperative we understand that we abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the spirit, that war against your progress, that war against your stability in Christ Jesus. All right. Let's go to Proverbs 13 and 20. Proverbs 13 and 20. It's all in the mind. It's all getting ready to make sense as we unlock um, the next part of scripture that we want to get into um, in the next part of Romans. But I'm already out of time, so we might have to just pick this up the, uh, next week. All right. Uh, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Uh, shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. My God, there's a lot to unlock here in the Proverbs. Again, it's a good book of instruction. Amen. For those who are starting their Amen Christian journey, but you know, and it's imperative we understand that. You know, they always use the admonishment, birds of a feather flock together, what have you. Those who desire wisdom must learn that they have to walk with individuals um, who have an expectation, that have a demonstration of life that demonstrates their next level, right? It's imperative that, amen, we as believers, you know, try to yoke ourselves up with people who, amen, are, um, are, are trying to go somewhere spiritually just to make it plain, right? Um, you know, those individuals who are fools, they'll find companions and they'll find people who, you know, are up to no good, you know, and in doing so, they will end up being destroyed. That's what the scripture says right here, right? It's imperative that you find someone from an accountability perspective that will help you. The scripture talks about how iron sharpeneth iron, right? It's imperative that we as believers find ourselves yoked. I have never met in this particular season um, of living so many people who don't want to keep Christian friends, but want to live a Christian lifestyle. I have never met so many, especially my age, 
when our, our homeboys and homegirls are people who are not in the will of God, my bestie is somebody that I go out and smoke a black and mouth and snatch somebody's wig off and go crazy. That's my bestie. It's, it's almost as if we shun people of the light. We shun people who um, want to walk with fruit and walk with character and walk with integrity uh, to hang out with people who, you know, um, uh, um, want to, you know, listen to Jill Scott all day and read poetry and, 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 are, and are connected to things that do nothing to help us spiritually build up our spirit man. Right. There used to be a day and a time and a sentiment when, uh, especially in the body of Christ, when younger women thought it was OK not to try to be like the mothers, but to watch that example and weren't afraid of my next level. They weren't afraid of the accountability of, of kicking it with people who were married. If that's what I strive for in life, if that's what I want to be in life is 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 successful with a successful marriage and relationship. Why not link up with what my next level is? If I want to be a multimillionaire, what am I doing sitting on the stoop, you know, hanging out with people uh, who got to rob Peter to pay Paul? Sometimes in life, we're called upon to find what our next level is in spiritually. And sometimes the circles have to change. And in, in the circles changing, the mentality changes. And, and, and that's hard for some of us because we've always been taught we don't leave people behind. We've always been taught you look out for Pookie. you always been taught you look out, you bring your cousin with you. But there's sometimes in the spirit when you have to say to yourself, you know what? I've got to sever this tie because this tie is not, it's going to lead me in utter destruction. And I know in this ministry, there's some people that had to have to cut off folk who weren't getting on, folk on board with the vision because they say, you know what, this ministry is going somewhere and God is using this young man. And this ministry is not the same ministry that it was 30 years ago. And for some people, that's tough because it means, you know, I literally got to cut some things off. And I really got to, you know, but that's a part of maturity that is associated with living a life of wisdom and being spiritual in thinking that you're not afraid of your next level. That you're not afraid, you know what, if God has called me into the spirit of entrepreneur, I'm not afraid to find who the people are in the ministry, amen, who have had businesses and who, if I desire to be a homeowner, who, why not link up with somebody that's doing, you know, that, that's a homeowner. If I'm looking at uh, 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 um, doing some things in my house and changing some things in my personal space, why not look, I, I, I've never been, I, I never understood why there's so people, a lot of young people, a lot of young men who are afraid of myself and different individuals that, uh, um, 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 that are doing some things uh, um, uh, um, positively in life. I, I was telling my wife the other day, I would want to link up with me even if I wasn't saved just because of what I'm doing in the natural. You got somebody that's out here that God is using and, and you know, he's trying to be halfway decent. He's goal oriented. He's doing something in corporate America. But in the church, we have cascaded that. We have, we have made that. Nah, we, nah, that ain't cool enough for this church and this generation no more. So it's imperative that we as believers shift our mentality, shift our mindset. I, you know, one of my dear friends is, I have a lot of good friends in ministry, but I really thank and praise God for my next level in life, which was my homeboy, my dear good friend, uh, Elder Chris Graham uh, over at Bethlehem Temple Church. I, there was a... Um, uh, Pastor Antoine Martin here in the city of Los Angeles, right up the block from us, linked me up with him. And I thank and praise God for the deposit that he placed in my life because I was watching Chris for my next level in life. I was watching him. I was watching Chris, man, uh, work a decent job. He had a good job. He had a beautiful wife. I mean, when well, I had, have, has a beautiful wife, family. And I said to myself, you know what? Uh, I want to link up with him and I want to learn and I want to, and I want to, you know, I want to, I want to do some of that stuff, you know? <laughs> and he was serious about ministry. Amen. He was under his leader and God was using him. And, and, and I saw that as my next level in Christ. And I said, you know what? I'm going to link up with him. I saw my big brother up in the north, uh, uh, Pastor Chris Foster. And I said to myself, man, you know, there's so much I can learn from. I learned about innovation. I learned about grind. I learned about hustle. I learned about uh, being creative in ministry. There's so many things that he's poured into me. I'm, you cannot be afraid of that next level in life. If you were desiring to do something positive, amen, in uh, uh, the kingdom of God, you cannot be afraid to walk in the council and the circle of those individuals who are wise. The scripture himself says that the, the companion of a fool shall be destroyed. <laughs> so there are some individuals who, you know, they wonder why the life is treacherous. I'm saying to myself, it makes no sense to be baptized in Jesus' name. Somebody need to get this word. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we ducking every five minutes. 
uh, uh, ducking, ducking bullets, wondering if somebody going to roll up on us. You know, God is calling some of us out of circles. God is calling some of us out of things that do not have any fruit. And it's all about changing of the mindset. It's all about changing your circle and changing your mentality. What's wrong with being linked up with people who want to pray more than they want to party? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? With people who, amen, want to enjoy a, a nice time on the evening and go home to their families and not have no craziness. What's wrong with that? What's wrong? What, why have we made holiness ugly? Why have we made it, it uh, you know, th that being saved is not good enough? Why is that as a, as 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 a body of believers? I, I, I thank God for my upbringing. I thank God for growing up in, in ministry where I saw next levels in life and I wasn't afraid of that. And they weren't afraid to pull me up. So let me let me get on some of you older generation. Let's stop being afraid to put our arms around the younger generation. We're going to always be your children. Every time I walk home, my mom will tell me, I don't care how many letters you got behind your name, and, and you, <laughs> you're going to always be my son, <laughs> which means you're going to get your tail in there <laughs> and do some dishes. <laughs> you're going to bring me something to drink because there's accountability in that next level of living. And there's so much I've come to learn in church. Amen. Growing up, we had deacons, we had individuals who lived the life, who poured into us, and we weren't afraid of reaching into their lives to ask, how do you do this? How do you do that? Right? So, and, and that generation wasn't afraid to say, you know what? Uh, uh, no, you, you, you can't do that. You can't date that. No, you can't walk with that. Because I've had some examples of that, and, and I, I literally had, there's a first lady to this day, and I'll spare her name <laughs> here on the broadcast, who literally, I was, I was coming out of a concert, and I was, and I was man, I seen a girl, and I was, made that beeline, and, and, and she had no, made it her priority to, to grab me in the parking lot and to tell me, you have got to get a control on, 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 on lust. You have got to get a, you have got to get a handle on whatever you you think that is that is not the way because where God wants to take you I love you enough to put my hands on you and say you know what nah I'm not gonna let you go up here in this church and sing this house down and go in this parking lot and, and be out here and be horny Bob <laughs> not gonna let you do it and that thing convicted me and and, and you know what and, and I got over my feelings but I, I but it but but it was to my own saving my God my God, <laughs> pastor's being too candid tonight. Hey, but hey, you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. We already behind. <laughs> it was to my own saving because she saw enough in me to say, you know what? No, God has somebody special for you. Don't squander your anointing. Don't squander your character. Don't squander who you are. Don't you settle in the moment. You stay focused. You in school. You close to the finish line. What you out here chasing something? Chasing somebody that don't halfway want to be saved. Don't halfway want to love God, don't halfway want to be in church, don't halfway want to be in the will of God, why would you give, why would you, why would you, why would you do that, why would you throw that all away from what God wants to do in your life, I hope this word is burning on somebody tonight, and I hope this word will choke slam you in decision making to tell you, I've got to think bigger, I've got to come out of carnal thinking into spiritual thinking. I got so much more to go. I haven't even gotten to distress, but <laughs> I'm telling y'all this. We cannot be afraid, amen, of reaching this next generation. We cannot be afraid of holding these young uh, in this ministry. There is no better life than the life of Christ Jesus. There is no better experience than the uh, experience of Christ Jesus. You can be saved and have a ball in life. And let me tell you something. I was in church and I never stopped having fun. I never stopped having I, my best experience was in the blood and in, in, in church and being in the house of God. And I've never and I never feel like the world cheated me of anything. So I rebuke all that Tamar, uh, uh, the Braxton girls talking about I wish I would have gone out there. And no, I, I, I thank and praise God that he preserved a little bit of me because <laughs> I did some nonsense. And I'd be the first to say, thank God for the grace of God. But I thank and, and praise God there was somebody that reached out and said, you know what, homeboy? You know what? I see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. It's about thinking bigger, church. 
It's about thinking bigger. It's about seeing what God wants to do. And you may not see it, but I love you enough, amen, to put my arms around, until you, around you until you figure it out, until you get it together. And I, and I refuse to let you fall into the pit and the trap uh, of, of feeling as if this world can offer you more than what you can have here in Christ Jesus. I want to speak to that spirit tonight and to tell you it's time for you to change your mentality. Don't you come out of this particular season going back to the same struggles going back to the same circles, going back to the same nothingness. God is saying, renew your mind. It's time for you to make a commitment to be spiritually minded. Amen. That your ways may please God. My God. <laughs> Helping myself tonight. <laughs> we don't have honest conversations like these in church anymore because we everybody's saved and everybody, you know, everybody's a theologian. You, you know, you can barely teach uh, uh, because everybody's got the answer and everybody's got the etymologies and everybody's got all the deep things of God. But sometimes it's just time for plain teaching. It's I love you enough to tell you to think bigger, to think more of yourself, to think more of, uh, to aspire more, <laughs> you know, not to let yourself get lost in church. Churchism. Amen. There is so much more. There's a greater anointing. Amen. On the other side of even this struggle. And I pray and hope it's my earnest desire and plea uh, that as believers, amen, we come out of this particular season. Amen. That we would be empowered. Amen. To, to be all that God wants us to be. But it cannot happen with us chasing a carnal mentality in ways that don't please God. So even tonight, my prayers, Lord, change my mindset. Lord, change my thinking. Lord, don't let me settle. Don't let me settle. Don't let me settle for anything other than what your will and your way and your purpose is. Don't let me settle for mediocrity. Don't let me settle for in-betweenness. Don't let me settle for being uh, 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 complacent. Don't let me settle for being average. And when Don't let me be a C in life my whole life when, when you put a potential in me. When you put potential in me to own a business, when you've been put potential in me to, to be a homeowner, why would, why would I settle? And God is saying, I'm calling you to be spiritual minded. You're going to need a spiritual mindset to weather what's coming. It's time to make up your mind, believer. It's time to make up your mind, children of God, to walk worthy. Amen. To walk worthy of the vocation. Amen. To amen. To make up in your mindset. You know what? <laughs> I'm all in. I ain't going nowhere. This is the life. This is the way. And 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 there's nothing sweeter, amen, than being on this side of salvation. You will not miss a thing <laughs> that the world has to offer. When you make up in your mind, so you make up in your mind to have a spiritual mindset. My God, I gotta stop here. Amen. I've got a few more notes just here on the <laughs> spiritual versus carnal thinking. Amen. It happens to me all the time, but God, I love how God shifts the conversation. Because if you don't have a spiritual mentality, you will not be persuaded that He can keep you even when tests and trials come. And even when pitfalls of life come, and even when sometimes it's difficult to find, amen, reasons to stay encouraged, and sometimes you get disappointed as a believer, but with a spiritual mentality, with a renewed mindset, amen, by having the counsel of wisdom and people pouring into you, you know what, you can say, I, I can make it through adversity, I can make it through hardship. I can keep my sanity. I can keep myself together. Amen. I can live a life that's pleasing and worthy of God. Amen. I can build something. I can build the, uh, the kingdom of God. I don't have to be, you know, in the house <laughs> and, and, and be raw about where I am. I can be honest about where I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I certainly hope and pray, amen, that we make up our mind as believers to do as the Apostle Paul would tell us here in the book of Romans. And that is that we would be found in Christ because, amen, I'm telling you, <laughs> in order for us to fully understand, amen, amen, uh, 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 where we're going with this particular text, you must understand, amen, that, amen, uh, uh, spiritual mindedness is life and peace. It is the life. It is the life. I hear my, I hear young people say all the time, you know, I, I'm saying young people like I am people. That's the life. That's the life. That's the life. That's the life. No. <laughs> see, we see with the apostle Paul. I'm back here in Romans 8, y'all. I can't. <laughs> By God, I'm back in Romans 8, <laughs> what he says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This is the life. It gets no better than living a life with a spiritual mindset, 
and walking in the spirit of God, not after the flesh, amen, uh, uh, um, but a life that pleases Christ Jesus. This is life. This is the life. Um, and I have too many testimonies of too many of you here on here that I'll tell you uh, that every day with Jesus really does get sweeter than the day before. And it may take you some time. It may not feel like it because there are some times in life when you have to drink from that bitter cup. There are some times in life when you have to deal with some adversity. There are some times in life when you just like, you know what, this seems overwhelming. But at the end of the day, you can have the testimony like the Apostle Paul. I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from his love. That takes a spiritual mentality, but that spiritual mentality will anchor you in a place of peace and it is necessary for this life. Amen. I, I, I had a whole thing that I was getting ready to get into. Amen. And, and who knows, maybe, you know, maybe next week I'll get into it. Um, but I can't help but think about how disconnected some people are right now just with all that's going on in our country. Uh, what's going on with Breonna Taylor and, 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 and all the stuff that we're dealing with as a country and how people are up in arms and how, amen, there are people who are crying out, amen, for, uh, uh, um, for help and support. And they need uh, something that we get and we have in relationship, in fellowship with Christ Jesus. You have access to life and peace where you don't need the world system to validate you well, all you have to do is just stand on your conviction and be persuaded no matter what comes that God's got you and whether it's good times whether it's bad times uh, whether I'm overwhelmed whether I'm down wherever it is I'm, I'm, I'm safe in his arms and I am and fully, fully persuaded that he's able to keep me and to preserve me until his coming and so tonight, I want to encourage you, amen, to move, amen, amen, in the spirit, amen, and to move with a spiritual mindset that will be able to help you uh, be, you know, I'm going to get into it. So just bear with me next week because I got so much, amen. <laughs> I got so much to deal with, but mental health is something that is so necessary for us fully to understand. That's what I was setting up for, to get into this concept of what it means to be or distress. So bear with me. We're going to get there. I am persuaded. I love you. I'm Pastor Kyron Shorter here at Bethesda Thomas Church in the city of Los Angeles, California, where God is doing something awesome and incredible where only he can get the glory. I hope and pray that wherever you are, you would receive Christ Jesus today, that you truly are encouraged and inspired to go a little bit further in this journey and that you are persuaded, amen, that God loves you and that God keeps you, amen, and that God can sustain you in this particular season. If you desire to be a blessing to this ministry, I want everybody on this line to just grab something. I don't care if it's $2, $3, go out to Cash App, go out to PayPal. Let's sow into this word. Let's sow into this atmosphere, amen. Let's sow, let's sow, let's sow, and let's sow believing. Like I sowed in this, like I said, in this Bible class when I first got started, all these years of sowing, God is, 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 would have reaped years ago if I would have just would have had a bigger mentality. <laughs> if I just would have, would have just shifted my thinking, my world would have shifted literally. And so I'm praying tonight, amen, that you'll sow a seed in faith and that uh, you will go um, and take that next step, amen, in your own journey, that you're open, you're thinking of even as it relates to our giving, amen, because God certainly is not slack concerning his promise. When he says he will open the windows, I am a living witness. When he tells you that there is room enough to, re no room, no room to receive it, you will literally have to tell people no. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I got what I need. Amen. And so I certainly hope and pray, amen, that you would be persuaded, amen, to keep doing God's will. Be persuaded to keep giving God your best and all that you do. Be encouraged. I hope this bless somebody. I hope, amen, this bless somebody. It might not have been Greek and Hebrew tonight. Trust me, I got a whole lexicon of, of etymologies and words and stuff tonight. But I just hope that tonight you got something that you can chew on and that you can be encouraged. And most importantly, that you'll wrap your arms around somebody else that needs this encouragement and you'll let them know that they can make it to, that they can get through um, their difficulties and that, amen, if you're persuaded, amen, <laughs> they should be persuaded as well. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you for all things. We thank you for being so good to us. I pray even tonight, oh God, 
you would hide this word away in our heart, O oh God, that we sin out against you, O oh God, um, that it would further develop us, O oh God, to have a spirit where we are persuaded to see you do the great things in our life, O oh God. You're able to keep us even in distress. When our heart is overwhelmed, O oh God, you will lead us to places, O oh God, of safety, to a rock that's higher than our, O oh God, to a sure foundation in the midst of all that's going on in our country, O oh God. I pray a special blessing even right now over the family of Breonna Taylor and that community, O oh God, in Connecticut, or in Kentucky, all over our country, O oh God. I pray for healing as only you can see, as only you can do, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, for understanding in the midst of everything that we're facing as a country, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you would bless every home one by one, O oh God, that you would help us to think bigger, dream bigger, be inspired bigger, O oh God, to have bold faith, O oh God, in times like this to believe you for the more. I trust you and I thank you, O oh God, and I consider it done in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of myself, the sound crew, God bless y'all. <laughs> First Lady Shorter, amen. Those of us that make up this Temple Church, we love you. God bless you. Tune in this Sunday as we close the Summer of Salvation Revival, as well as we close our series on, amen, uh, grace, right? Uh, while there's yet grace, I certainly hope, amen, that you're blessed, encouraged. Hit the share button. Share this with somebody that they would be edified by this uh, Bible class tonight. We love you all. God bless you. On behalf of myself, First Lady, God bless you. Take care. We love you. And see you soon. See you at prayer tomorrow at noon. Peace. <laughs>